Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Taxpayers should check out these tips before choosing a tax preparer. IRS Tax Tip 2020-165, December 3rd, 2020. As taxpayers get ready, there's a link to get ready here, to file their 2021 taxes, they may be thinking about hiring a tax preparer. So, so in general, as your return becomes more complex, you're more likely to want and probably should get a tax preparer. If you have a more basic return, then you may be able to do your own taxes and be okay with that. So for example, if you have a very basic return, you might be using tools such as free file type of tools on the IRS website. As your return gets a little bit more complex, then you might be using proprietary software, which has kind of an interview process, which will help you to kind of walk through the data input, such as like an H&R Block software or say a TurboTax type of software. And then if you're getting a more complex return, and I would say like if you're itemizing, if you have itemized deductions and or if you think you're going to be earning more in the future or you want to have to more tax planning, which is often a situation where you need uh, more information if you have your own business, for example, if you actually have to make tax payments instead of having everything withheld from the W-2, or if you have multiple incomes, once you get married and whatnot, you might have multiple incomes, which makes the estimation of the tax withholdings more difficult. Those are circumstances when people are more likely to want a tax professional. Now, when you get the tax professional, when you go to that step, you're really paying not only for the tax preparation, just to get the, this year done normally, you really want to pay someone that's going to be there if there's an audit so they can they can go and look at it a more complex return and and deal with the audit and and help you at least with that or give you some advice with it at least and you're also thinking probably in terms of planning for the future I'd like to have some tax planning I'd like to have you help me out with my basically my withholdings and whatnot make sure that if i have estimated payments help me out with that type of thing so usually when you're thinking about a tax professional you're thinking possibly of a more long-term type of relationship and so you want to make sure that you're picking someone that kind of lines up with your goals typically so that's my general take on it at least so people should choose a tax preparer wisely this is important because taxpayers are responsible for all the information on the return no matter who prepares their return uh, so note that oftentimes you start to rely people start to rely on their tax preparer and because their tax preparer is giving them advice based on what, what the IRS would approve or not approve or on the law, then they also often start to see the tax preparer as if they're the IRS, right? The, like if the tax preparer, you know, puts it on the return, then it must be okay. If the return's accepted, then that's okay. That's not the case, really. The, IR, the tax preparer is helping as an advisor to, to make sure to help you to be in compliance, of course, with the law and fill out the, the tax return properly. If there's a problem of, with, the, with the return that is going to be filed, they aren't typically going to go back to the tax preparer. They're going to go back to the individual. The individual has the responsibility to sign the return and report their income. They're hiring the tax preparer to help them. So it's not taking the responsibility away from the individual by hiring the tax preparer, even though oftentimes the tax return is more complex than most individuals can, can just do without being a professional basically a tax professional if you have you know higher income and more complex uh, tax returns. So that's why you want to get a, long, a tax professional basically that you can trust. If you have a tax professional that you're going to use for one year for a highly complex return and then you're never going to deal with them again, if there is an audit in the future, they're going to come to you and, you, and you're not going to have the support of the tax professional. So you'd like to build up a relationship so that the tax professional hopefully will be there and support you if there is an audit because the IRS is going to come back to the taxpayer taxpayer then is probably going to go to the tax professional and then and then that's how the support will will generally will generally work so you'd like to have a long-term relationship if you have more complex uh, tax returns typically so there are different kinds of tax preparers and taxpayers need, needs will help determine which kind of preparer is best for them with that in mind here are some quick tips to help people choose a preparer when choosing a tax professional, taxpayers should check the IRS directory of preparers. There's a link to that here. Uh, while it is not a complete listing of tax preparers, it does include those who are enrolled agents, CPAs, and attorneys, as well as those who participate in the annual filing season program. So that's going to be a good check to see to make sure that you're dealing with someone that's uh, reputable here and it has the different types of tax preparers that could be included on it so that we the tax preparers it includes the enrolled agents the cpas and the attorneys and so on uh, check the preparers history with the better business bureau 
Taxpayers can verify an enrolled agent's status. There's a link to that here on irs.gov. Ask about fees. Taxpayers should avoid tax return preparers who base their fees on percentage of the refund or who offer uh, to deposit all or part of your refund into their financial accounts. So notice the tax preparers are not supposed to typically do that. You're not supposed to typically have a contingent fee on the refund because that if you see that you kind of think well this it could be like a scam because that makes the the taxpayer or the tax professional uh want to have a higher refund so they're more likely than to prepare the return in such a way that uh, could have a higher refund which you might think would be good but it could mean that they're going to do things that they're going to take positions on the tax code that they couldn't defend in the case of an audit and if you get audited that's going to happen possibly three years later right so the tax professional or the tax preparer uh, if they're doing that kind of tactics might be if it's more of a fraud they might not be around when the audit happens three years later so they they have an incentive to to inflate possibly the refund and then disappear when when the audit's going to happen which is going to happen you know within three years time so it's typically you're not supposed to basically have um, have uh, contingent fees on the refund it also incentivizes the tax preparer to basically uh, tell people to over withhold on their on their w-2 withholding so to take more money out of each paycheck when that you don't really want to do that it, the only reason you're doing that is so that you get a small refund at the end so that you do not have to pay penalties and interest the goal isn't to have a huge refund at the end of the at the end of the tax if there's a huge refund at the end that means that uh, there was poor tax planning because they over you yeah, over withheld typically uh, is and so that's typically not good and there's incentives to do that if again the fee is based on a percentage of the refund which is not supposed to be the case also uh, the the money that's going from the internal revenue service the government should never be going to the tax the, the tax preparer it should be going to the tax payer right so you don't really want you know the tax preparer is going to return, prepare the return, verify the signature, send that into the IRS. The IRS then sends the payment directly to the taxpayer, not to the, not to the tax preparer. So if the preparer is in the middle of the transaction of where the money's going from the IRS to you, the taxpayer, that's kind of a red flag, not good, uh, leave. So be wary of tax return preparers who claim they can obtain larger refunds than others. So again, if, if someone's claiming that the, if, if someone's big pitch on the tax preparation is that they're going to get a large refund, it's quite likely that they're that they're preparing tax returns and then they're going to be gone. It's a scam because they're going to they're going to charge a large refund. They're going to you know collect their payments on it. And then again, if they're taking positions that are not sustainable within an audit, they're going to then what's going to happen is they're probably not going to be around when you get audited <laughs> within the next three years. And uh, and then and then you're going to have to pay possibly if, if you can't support the positions they took, then you're going to have to pay the money back plus interest and penalties. And you're not going to have the support of the person who if it was a scam. Right. This is an indication that it might be a scam if they're if they're in if they're basically proclaiming that they're going to have a larger refund than anybody else. It seems like they're taking positions that are unreasonable. And so they might not be around <laughs> after after they prepare the tax return to help you with the audit that could take place uh if it and if it does and notice an audit doesn't always take place it depends on the positions that that they take but again if you don't want to be taking positions obviously that are not supportable the, in the case of an of an audit so that would be not good so in any case ask if they plan to use e-file so you got the e-file link to e-file here the irs is typically wanting e-file so if a tax preparer doesn't have software that uses e-file at this point that's highly suspicious you know if you have a paid tax preparer at this point and they're doing taxes like by hand you know that's kind of it's a little strange you would think they would be on the e-file i would go with e-file the irs is pushing hard on tax preparers to use e-file make sure the preparer is available people should consider whether the individual or firm will be around months or years after filing the return taxpayers should do this because they might need the preparer to answer questions about the preparation of the tax return so remember when you do the tax return it's it's if you're going to get audited and even if you take a very conservative tact on the tax return you don't do anything out of the ordinary you might get audited just randomly then you would like to have the help of the tax preparer especially if it's a more complex tax return and that's kind of the goal if you get a more complex as your return becomes more complex 
then your goal is to have a long-term relationship with a tax preparer that's going to support you. You're going to still be around if there's questions by the IRS so that you can at least run those questions by the tax preparer and they, and they stand by their work, right? They stand by uh, the advice that, they, that they've given and, and, and so on and so forth. That's what you're looking for typically as your income goes up. So ensure the preparer signs and includes their preparer tax identification num number. Paid tax return preparers must have a P10 to prepare tax returns. So the, although you, you as the tax preparer are primarily responsible for reporting the taxes, even though you're hiring a, hiring a tax preparer and the IRS will be going directly to you, the tax, tax payer, uh, not the preparer when, when there's a problem, you, the preparer still provides their information to the IRS as well. So the IRS does want the preparer information uh, as well. And if, if, the, if they are not putting their preparer information on there and they're collecting fees, then they shouldn't be doing that. And that's, that's a clear sign that uh, something is wrong because they're, they're, that means they're not giving the audit trail to them that should be there when they're a, a paid preparer. And that would once again be a red, red flag to me that there's a there's a you know possible fraud here. Possible this guy's not going to be around. Possible he's taking positions that aren't aren't uh, sustainable or something like that. So, and then uh, check the person's credentials. Only attorneys, CPAs, and enrolled agents can represent taxpayers before the IRS in tax matters. Other tax return preparers who participate in the IRS annual filing season program. There's a link to that here. Have limited practice rights to represent taxpayers during audits of returns they prepare. So notice if you if you need someone to actually kind of represent you to the IRS, meaning like if you got a letter and they're trying to audit you and you want someone to basically kind of uh, act in your behalf, like kind of like a, a lawyer would do for a, a legal case, act on your behalf with regards to the court as an agent, then uh, you, you'd need someone only attorneys, CPAs, enrolled agents can represent taxpayers before the IRS, which is basically acting as an agent with regards to a client. Uh, acting in the client's best interest uh, with uh, the relation to the Internal Revenue Service. So more information can be found on the links below. Tax time guide, free tax return, help available in person and online. Publication 17, fe uh, your federal income tax. There's links to those items here. There'll be a link to this in the description.